Welcome back to part two of Korea. Let's focus closely on lines 10 to 19. Notice how the young soldier's death has been described in an emotive way through the simile. The boy tore at his tunic over the heart as if to pluck out the bullets. However, the older soldier's death has been heavily understated. He simply referred to as the other, who healed quietly over on his back. It must have been because of the hands in his pockets. The narrator doesn't seem to have any emotional respect for this older soldier's arrogance, as there seems to be a satirical tone in the fact that the older soldier, his hands, were still in his pockets at the time that he was shot. Perhaps the narrator is mocking this older soldier's sense of nonchalance towards death. The older soldier is disillusioned by the idea of war, and he seems to stand against authority. Please note that, that satire is the use of humour, irony or exaggeration, to expose and criticise people's stupidity or vices. So noticing very carefully the importance of the soldier's death and that age difference between them, and how we could also say that they are um, compared to the father and son figures. So, there's a clear juxtaposition between the young soldier's emotional fear of death and the older soldier's lack of care towards the execution. The main theme here is the age divide between younger generation and the older generation. Younger characters seem to be emotionally attached, morally aware of the rules and expectations. However, the older characters are shown to not respect the typical moral rules and expectations. For instance, the older soldier decided not to show any sign of respect towards his executioner. And similarly, the father figure seems not to morally be care, care about the rules and regulations about parenting and how one, as a parent, should be considerate of their child's safety rather than financial gains. So the buttons are quite important as a symbol in the story for post-traumatic stress disorder, a disorder, as I've mentioned before quite a few times in part one of this video. In the paragraph beginning when I was on my honeymoon, here the execution and by extension the war is linked to nature and more specifically to the landscape of Ireland. The exploding furs or gorse pods, which might usually be seen as beautiful or at the very least unextraordinary, are perverted through association with violence, with the buttons of the boy's tunic into something so shocking that I couldn't get it out of my mind all day. It destroyed the day. Lines 28 to 35 hints that the father is not trustworthy. Back to their unusual relationship, he is not a stereotypical father figure. He's angry at his son schooling. The adverb aggressively clearly suggests that the father is not interested in his son's academic success. They have an awkward relationship, the father and son, as it was new to me to hear him talk about his own life at all. The fact that the son used the adjective new seems to suggest the lack of communication the father has had with his son in the past, and therefore their relationship is not stereotypical at all. For paragraph beginning with sounds a bit highfalutin to me, there's again a reference to nature and the natural image of a spider web. This simile connects the war to an image of nature. Here the spider web is the memory of war, or of an event within the war. The gesture is that of a man removing an invisible blindfold, one that if it actually existed, would only obscure the vision and not obstruct it entirely. So, the father describes his post-traumatic stress disorder through this simile of a spider web, a haunting image. Paragraph beginning as the eels came in. Now, I'd like you to focus on the description here about the setting. This is the longest paragraph that seems to describe the setting for quite a while, and there's a reason to it. Notice the awkward sense of isolation between the father and son in this dead quiet atmosphere. Looking at lines 55 to 56 please. Something calculating in the face. 
Here, the father is described to be calculating. Now, connotations of calculating suggest that he seems to be acting in a scheming and ruthless manner. There's an evil tone here about the father, almost villainous. This makes the father seem... What? What does it seem to foreshadow about him if he's already calculating in lines 55 to 56? The son is described to feel guilt over the prospect of leaving his father in the financially unstable business of fishing. Notice how he's described to say, The guilt of leaving came. I was discarding his life to assume my own. A man to row a boat would eat into the decreasing profits of the fishing. And it was even and it was even not certain he'd get renewal of his license, fishing license. This is later juxtaposed against his father's selfish plan to send his son off to war for his own financial profit. Looking at page 39, line 92 and onwards, here is the turning point in the story, the twist, the climax. Unfortunately, the son discovers that his father doesn't really care about his son at all. The setting reflects the son's identity. The sun feels like shit and piss, and the warm fleshy smell of worms crawling. The setting is a metaphorical representation of his splintered identity. The sun's loss of innocence and respect for his father is evident here, as he knew his youth had ended. So this is quite a depressing moment in the story, and a shocking one indeed for the readers. The readers find out that the father is quite evil and villainous after all. This is direct result of eavesdropping on his father's conversation with Farrell about soldiers and the financial profits parents gain from their sons being at war. You can listen to the tune of $10,000 if your son dies at war. So, let's go back to our previous lesson. Which painting would you associate with the father figure in Korea? Which father seems to be quite similar in any way? to the father represented in the Korea short story. Let's go back to the story and look at the paragraph beginning with It'll be my own funeral. The son portrays that he knows his father's intentions in sending him to America by subtly linking my own funeral with your own days in the war. The son is pretty angry about the whole situation and wants to hurt his father's feelings. He wants to hurt his father so he talks about his father's post-traumatic stress disorder and questions his father about how he continues to live with the memory of war. And notice how the father goes back to not wanting to talk about it because his attempt at trying to create this bond between his own son and himself has failed miserably. So, in the actual exam, you will be expected to compare this short story or any other one from the Telling Tales collection with another one. And here's a mock question for you. Compare this short story, Korea, with the darkness out there for the way in which it presents loss of innocence. Remember, the mark scheme is on this page right now. I'd like you to focus on the highest marks available because that's where you should always be aiming. Aim high and you'll get high in the right way. So level 6, 30 marks are available. Remember, these are the AOs that you have to focus on. AO 1, 2 and 3. I like to summarise the AOs in a kind of basic way so you don't forget. Now AO 1 are your ability to make points. AO 2 is analysis of language and structure and different interpretations is AO3 alongside historical and setting factors. Okay. So at the top of the level, your response needs to be specific. You need to analyze language, form and structure, and you need to show different interpretations, different opinions and reactions to the short story by referring to the author's context as well. Here's a, an example of a comparison grid you can make in your plan when you attempt to answer the mock essay question. It's known as SCASI, S for setting, C for characters, A for action, main events in the story, structure, the order of events, use of repetition, 
the um, use of punctuation marks and sentence types, and I for ideas, as in what was the writer's message? What is he or she trying to argue? And these are things you can compare. You can compare the main story's events, then compare the order of events, compare the characters, the narrative, the beginnings and endings, motifs and imagery. There's not one way to follow for a good comparative essay, but one of the main things you need to use are cohesive devices at the beginning of every paragraph to show that you are indeed comparing the two stories. Okay, good luck everybody, focusing on comparing this short story career with the darkness out there and I will be uploading some model paragraphs from the darkness out there shortly. Good luck.